Thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here on behalf of uh, TD Bank. Um, what I thought I'd do with my 10 minutes is uh, give you a bit of a, an overview of the study we put out, uh, I can't believe it's, I guess, about five months ago. A lot's happened since then, but May 2010 on, uh, on specifically on Ontario's healthcare system, how to get out of this, this challenge that we've got on sustainability. Now, you could have easily replicated that across the country, of course. So. But, uh, I mean, really, uh, we don't use the word innovation through the report that much, but implicitly we do. There's a lot of talk about efficiency, a lot of talk about leadership, again, not directly using the word leadership, but uh, a lot of the key themes, I think, are very applicable. So, first off, uh, just on the sustainability, I, being an economist, we looked at it very much from an, through an economic lens, and uh, obviously very applicable when you're dealing with uh, budget pressures and, and numbers. Uh, uh, essentially, the way we see it is that the spending has been growing at about 7-8% uh, a year. Uh, not just the public purse, but also private as well. Um, and going forward, any kind of status quo estimate of the cost, given things like demographics, the aging population, the desire to live longer dealing with chronic illnesses like diabetes, you wouldn't expect the spending pressures to go down from the status quo, or from the past rather, but the problem is their economy is not going to be growing as rapidly. So you might get 4% income growth in Ontario and other provincial economies, but if, you're, if your spending is growing at 7%, you got a problem. So this is where we get into these numbers where you, if you straight line the, the budget, uh, share of the budget on health, you get up to 80%. Obviously, that's not viable. It's not, it, it's, it, it's not sustainable, and this is where we get into the sustainability question, that something has to give. And uh, that's the first uh, point I want to make. We looked a lot at other jurisdictions. Now, interestingly, the spending, can't, Ontario and Canadian provinces, uh, both public and private spending on health, has been very much in the middle of the pack if you look at uh, you know, the G8 economies and spread it out to other advanced economies, which is interesting. I would have thought you'd see other jurisdictions growing their spending a lot slower based on slower income growth, but we're not seeing that. Obviously, other countries are going through the same challenges. Uh, so we didn't see any panacea, any country that's been able to get their spending plateau uh, down, but we were able to look at what other jurisdictions have done, which is interesting. So one thing, one lesson we've learned is that, well, just that, that the spending is really a worldwide phenomena. Number two is that there have been a lot of reforms around the world, but, you know, instead of just getting the spending growth down, as I've mentioned, which is something we've got to try and do, that uh, you get better bang for your buck. So the big reforms have translated into more value for dollar, and this is where you get into what I think is the key here, that sustainability is beyond just the dollars and cents. But uh, you can cut your spending growth down, but if your quality of the system's plummeting, you've got uh, as big a problem with sustainability. So, uh, so that was one thing, that savings are elusive, but quality you can benefit, so we, we looked abroad. Uh, that revenue, additional revenues may be uh, involved, and, uh, and we've got a couple of our recommendations. We've got ten recommendations of the report. Two of them are generating more revenues through innovative uh, types of, uh, of, 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 of techniques or instruments. Um, and the fourth thing is that I think we can do this within our public system. Now, we need to be bold and experiment, perhaps with more private finance, but I think that we're not, we haven't leveraged the efficiency side enough and the innovation within our current system, and we weren't able to look abroad and see any panacea from high, more hybrid systems than we've got. Um, there are some challenges that tend to emerge. Uh, of shifting resources from private away from public to private, so that can lead to some problems. So those are kind of four international lessons. Now, what to do about it? Um, obviously, we've, the, as I mentioned, the sustainability is uh, is something that we've got to to address, and not just again in getting the spending growth down. We've got to do that to some extent, but we got to get more bang for the buck. And you know, when we get into the innovation, it comes from the processes, comes from changing funding uh, mechanisms for hospitals, for doctors, the incentives we need to better align through these financial drivers, the way we pay hospitals, move away from global budgeting. We've seen internationally that. Uh, a system based more on episode of care seems to generate better efficiency, so that's something that I know we've seen a little bit of a shift in Ontario and some provinces towards, but we need to see more of that. I think in terms of doctors, doctors, the way that we pay them through fee-for-service, they're not necessarily incented to take into account the costs and benefits, so I think a shift away from that towards different, you can have blended systems, one where you do provide
provide bonuses over time, uh, and that's something we need to move towards as well. But information has got to be the root of this, and this is where we get into this whole notion of technologies. I, I couldn't believe, and me being a real neophyte in the health sector only six months ago, how paper-based our system remains in Canada, and I think we're all aware of that, but not just, there's just very little communication. I was quite astonished at, at the extent of it based on the numbers I saw, but somehow we got to got to move towards a more information-focused system, one with perhaps a quality council on health care to help direct practitioners on the most efficient way to do it, something with teeth, um, and, uh, and as well promotion, the information, getting the word out. Obviously, that's, that's got to be a key part of it. So information is a big, uh, is a big part of that. Um, so somehow, if we can get the system more integrated and aligned, I think we can somehow manage to get the spending growth down to some extent and get better bang for the buck. So that essentially is a, a big target of our report. We throw out some recommendations because the problem is some of these are going to cost in the short term. And yet the provinces are running, Ontario's running a huge deficit. How do you get the deficit down and invest a ton in an area that's already 46% of, of, of Ontario program expenditures? Well, it's not easy, but we do have some ideas to relieve spending pressures. The Ontario drug benefit, this was not a popular recommendation among TD shareholders, and we certainly heard about it, but it's a, it's a universal program. We need to better target that. So that's one area, I think, that we can, we can focus in on, and uh, so that, that's one thing. So we do have some ideas in the report as well to relieve the spending pressures, allow some reality allocation to investing in IT and, uh, and, and some of the other areas to, that, that are going to cost in the short term. So that's the first thing I wanted to, uh, to talk about very briefly. Uh, the second thing is that, you know, and this is obviously key, key in this room, is that we need to look at health care through a wider lens. Uh, I think, you know, based on our observations, and many would agree that health care has been often viewed as, as a cost to a budget rather than as a sector, as an area of productivity. We have a productivity problem in Ontario, we have a productivity problem in Canada. So we don't have, I don't have an issue with health care gobbling, gobbling up more as a share of GDP. Obviously we have a concern if it's gobbling up all the, uh, the tax base because it's going to leave no room to invest in other things like transportation. That's not sustainable unless your taxes go through the roof and we can't allow that to happen because we've got to improve the climate for investment and productivity to generate the incomes in turn to pay for it. So, you know, you can't allow your taxes to get uncompetitive um, and uh, you can't allow your budget position to get uncompetitive. But as, as a share of GDP, you can certainly see it grow and that's certainly one thing that I, I don't have a problem with if it's based on productivity and innovation. So, as I mentioned, we, we've got to acknowledge that we've got a challenge there, something that Peter obviously uh, reinforced uh, in his comments and uh, which is part of the reason why I guess we're here and we'll discuss more of that. Um, just some observations, I'm a, you know, a little bit I work in an economics department. Uh, I'm not out lending as much directly uh, to, era, to players in the health sector, but from what I'm hearing, you know, obviously we do have a problem with commercialization. That's the key. I'm hearing of a lot of good ideas in health, a lot of innovations which are sole source to the government, but which we're not innovating. And we've got some great infrastructure here with Mars, but I understand as well the rents are very expensive and it pushes a lot of healthcare companies to the periphery and are they able to take advantage of that. These are things that I, I don't fully know all the answers to, but, but certainly this is some of the things I'm hearing about in general. So, so in summary, um, you know, I think that we need to look at health through a wider lens. We've got to improve the sustainability, but that isn't separate from a health sector that's going to become an increasing share of our economy. The hope is that we can export some of these technologies and let other countries pay for them. Uh, we've got a productivity problem, and I, you know, governments have done a lot to improve the playing field here in Ontario and around the country federally, um, but yet we're not seeing the benefits flow in terms of the numbers, the output, and this is key. Now, I, I must say, I don't fully understand why. If you'd given that, uh, if I had given uh, that list to a government 10 years ago and said do all these things, they've done a lot of them, and yet we haven't seen that pick up. So this is where we need to, I think, better understand where the roadblocks are. Is it a cultural thing? Are we not taking on the risks? Uh, there's a lot of support for venture capital, but so these are things I think that a, a TD Bank, we plan to kind of 
delve into a bit, maybe talk to our clients more and get sort of the, the feeling from the ground because I tend to look at it, uh, just the, the numbers on a page. And it, it doesn't fully make sense to me now given all the, uh, the progress we've made and lowering the tax burden, eliminating t capital taxes, support for small business, and we're not seeing the productivity show up. So as an optimist, I'm hoping that there's just some lags there and it'll pick up. But uh, I do think we need to, to try and better understand it. So just a few things I wanted to talk about and look forward to the Q&A after. Thanks very much.